Hey, this is Ash from All Things Dentistry, the place where we're passionate about sharing those unwritten hints and tips of dentistry. While comb beams are so useful, I know you know that I know that you know they are amazing to use. And especially for implants, but especially for endo, super helpful. These limited field of view comb beams can be such a lifesaver. And I wanted to share this case with you in terms of how did I use it to plan in advance. Now, I'll go over a couple things. And you know what? If you have an extra couple things that you look at when you're using a comb beam, please go ahead and put in the comments below. Now stick around to the end of the video because I want to talk about one specific tip you need to know to prevent file fracture. In the next few uploads, we'll upload a maxi molar and potentially a mandibular molar just to kind of look at some of the practical things you can use to write down, take pictures of before you go ahead and dive into that root canal. So we're using Blue Sky Plan for this case. What we're going to be looking at is tooth number 25. So this is the 50-50 premolar. So 50% of the time it's got one canal, 50% of the time it has two canals. This case was referred to me this tooth right here because the provider got stuck right about here and took their rotary file right to here and then could not make it further so I took a comb beam and let's take a look at what's happening well first of all I can see we have two canals or is it one big one this is the coronal slice so things we look for with comb beams not these are not a long list first one we have a small lesion probably a large wide canal well, I've done the case so I can tell you now it's a large wide canal and one of the first things we can do is we can measure so what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure from one of the cusp tips to let's say even right here so this be 15 millimeters so 15.8 almost 60 millimeters to where the canal disappears on here why is it disappearing well that tells me that it either bifurcates in different directions different planes or it's just a big curve in this case it's a large curve are you tired of feeling frustrated and alone during complicated root canals? I understand that feeling. That's why I've created a course to solve those problems for you. But the course is just the beginning. You need to be part of a tribe where you can ask questions without fear of criticism. Join our safe place where you'll never feel alone. Learn and grow with the support of experts and peers. Don't wait any longer. Join us at allthingsendo.ca for a unique learning experience that fits any budget. No matter where you are, you're welcome to be part of our community. Okay, so that's the first number. The second little image, now this is very nuanced. What you're looking at here is actually the curve coming at you. So it's, if you can remember this image when you're looking at these types of slices, we'll rotate around at a different angle, but this is actually what this is, is the curve. And this potentially might be the portal of exit looking right at you in the eye. So just inside, we have an extracting tooth and there is exactly kind of what we're looking at. So there's the curve. And then in that cone beam, we're looking straight at us. And that's the view that you're seeing right now. So this is the axial slice. So this is a really important one. It tells us a few things. One, we've got a canal, looks like our wide buccal lingual canal. And we're following this apically. And they join, as you can see, they join. So if you're new to these, what you can do is the 3D is actually really helpful. And what you can do is strip away all the bone. Watch this. Look at that. And there's a root canal right there. So that is actually the curve. So that's the next little bit of information. Now what this will do, there we go. I can zoom in. We can tell that it's actually moving towards the lingual. So we'll try to find that, get the right shot with just the slices but in the 3d especially if you're brand new at reading these things it can be really complicated uh, just to kind of figure out where to look and how these things work use the 3d and you can depending on your software you can strip away bone and whatnot you can go to different types of tissues here this is bone there's bone let's go ahead and go to tooth Ooh. not bad there's soft tissue as well skin There's pretty much our angulation that we're going to get right about there. So what we can do is we can, we'll measure. So this to about here, that's about three mils. And then down to here is about 15. So I really did use this measurement. So measuring, we already talked about that, but measuring around the curve, I can't measure around the curve, but I can use proxy indicators. So roughly around three, this is around three and a half or 15 and a half. So 
you know, roughly 18, 19 mils, I was able to get the Wave 1 Gold yellow around that bend. So one of the things I learned in residency is that the shape of the root, there's a curve. The internal curve of that canal is actually greater. So expect more. So these are some of the tips that I learned from the comb beam. We know that now that there's a significant curve to the mesio on this case. So I've bent my file at the apical third. So it's like the apical two millimeters of my file. I'm going to place it to length and then I'm going to hit the go button. Now I'm trying to get around that curve. So I'm going to do it in small pecs. So I pull the file out, check. I'm going to check the flutes to make sure there's no debris. Make sure, well, for the first thing, make sure the damn thing's not broken. Make sure there's no debris. That's what I'm doing there. So I'm actually sh cleaning the flutes in my sponge. I'm going to bend the flutes and whoa, look at what happens here. See this light pattern difference? That is a huge indicator. What's really important, so let's take a look. That file is just about to break because it's elongated. So this is a gift. This is a gift from the endo gods. Now, how can we tell this? Well, you need to know the pattern of your file, meaning what is the helical pattern? Is it a tight helical wind at the bottom versus at the top? Wave on gold is fairly consistent. So you see how there's a consistent pattern of light. And then all of a sudden you've got this elongated thing. Okay, so here we have that file. I've taken it, we finished the case, I discarded it. So when I see this, we throw it away. But you can see under 10 times magnification, this is what a regular Wave and Go file looks like. Fairly consistent light pattern. So if you don't have high magnification, what you can do is just use the light patterns. And you'll have to look at, and you can Google what the file looks like, whatever file you're looking at, and see what the, you know, see what the helical, the coil is. I can't remember the exact names. Uh, of what your file looks like. It's more important to know kind of what is the pattern versus the exact angles and whatnot. So the now you can see the difference in the this file that's been elongated, that's just, or deformed. Look at the light difference. So you can see this light changes. So to me, that's the simplest way you can see that. And if it does fracture, I wanna add in, take a look at Al, Dr. Alan Nassay's video. He recently published it on fracture files. It is a great, Great video. I love that guy. He's been, he's contributed so much to endodontics in the world. Go ahead and watch it and, you know, put in the comments below. Hey, Ash says hi. So he knows that I'm actually watching his stuff. So hopefully that's helpful. I'm super grateful you're here. Go ahead and put it, put in the comments below if this type of video was helpful. And I really want to know if going through a maxillary molar, uh, maybe a retreat and a mandibular molar would be helpful. Talk to you soon. Cheers.